Welcome to Ghosts and Grit. What's going on? Welcome back to Ghosts and Grit. So on this episode, Katrina and I are going to do a breakdown of our investigation of the infamous LaLaurie Mansion in New Orleans. Now this location is a bit of a golden goose amongst us ghost hunters. There's been very few investigations done there and to date, Katrina and I's investigation has been the only televised one. It's the real deal and there's been some crazy stuff happen there. Head over to Discovery Plus and go check out Portals to Hell Season 1, Episode 4. So yeah, enjoy. How's it going? It's Jack Osborne and I'm joined by... Katrina Wideman. My uh, fellow paranormal investigator from Portals to Hell. Um, all right, we are doing a um, Podcast to Hell episode. And uh, what are we talking about this week, Katrina? Oh my gosh, probably... The one place every ghost hunter, every enthusiast, every history lover would want to get into the Lullery Mansion Ooh. in New Orleans. Yes. Um, this was a cool one. This was a cool tech. This was on my bucket list. Uh, let me tell you, ladies, Jack Osborne makes your dreams come true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, uh, but but when, I'll take it. I'll yeah, take the yeah. compliment. Yes. <laughs> Make all your paranormal dreams come true. <laughs> Stick with me. Um, but this had been on my bucket list since day one. I had been trying to get in there for years because, and especially, I worked for Ghost Adventures for a little bit as a producer. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. I was in their locations department, and uh, we had tried so hard to get into this mansion. We tried on uh, lockdown. We tried on Paranormal State, I think. And nobody is ever able to get in, and you did it. How <laughs> did you do this? Um, okay, so the gentleman that owns uh, the mansion, um, we had a mutual friend. And the guy that, you know, I, probably, I don't know if I'm going to say his name just because, you know, I don't know if he wants it out there. But, um, you know, he works in the energy industries. I think oil and gas. Um, and um, yeah, we just had a mutual friend and he came to one of my dad's shows with this family friend and we got chatting and yeah, we I went there with my dad during World Detour mm. and then um, I hit him up once portals got off the ground. It was like one of the first calls I made when we got greenlit and he was like, well, you know, okay. Like it, it, he wasn't like instantly like I'm in. Right. He was a little bit kind of hesitant because it's, it's his home. Yeah. Um, and he's, and he, you know, he's, the place is decorated to the nines and it's not, you know, that's not like a rundown old building in the French quarter. I mean, it's like a beautifully well-maintained mansion. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, and so he he was a little hesitant at first, but you know we had some com some kind of stipulations we had to follow, um, and it was more about kind of just respecting the property. Oh, okay, so um, no like blood ceremonies we had to do, or no, I think I think there, <laughs> there may have been there may have been a couple. I think he was like there was a couple things we couldn't talk about, but and I think it was more about the Nicolas Cage. Oh, the component. Yeah. Yeah, I think because he'd signed an NDA. Um, and so there were like certain specific stories that maybe we had been told or that that were out there we weren't allowed to discuss. I feel like that's what the stipulations were. Um, because Nicolas Cage, I think he, I think this friend of mine bought it from Nicolas Cage, mm. um, which is kind of crazy to begin with that Nicolas Cage would uh, own one of the more haunted locations. Well, then again, it kind of, it's fitting. Yeah, yeah, actually when we were there, I was like, is this where Nicolas Cage slept? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and then I was like, is this where Nicolas Cage ate a sandwich? Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm wondering if, if, if old Nicolas Cage's inspiration could have possibly come from living in, you know, a, uh, a heavily haunted location. Yeah, it's I I do wonder what his experiences yeah. were if he had any. Yeah. Um or if this was part of the reason why he wanted to buy the house. Yeah, cuz I feel like he may have gotten into some like weird occult type stuff because mm. he he built a mausoleum for himself in New Orleans that is a pyramid. Really? Yeah, a big giant fucking pyramid. Interesting. 
When did he build that? I think around the time that he owned the mansion. Oh, okay. So we're thinking maybe he went deep. Yeah. Like, like down he, a little rabbit hole. Yeah, like fully. Like he was like squeegeeing that third eye and yeah. really trying to <laughs> transcend, you know, time, space, and, uh, you know, the, the metaphysical world that we're in. Man, I would love to know his full story about that because then I, my head, I'm like, well, did you move in and you had experiences and then you were like, oh my gosh, there's something to this and let me see and let yeah. me build a pyramid and like what what happened first? What I, was the yeah, genesis? Exactly, chicken or the egg. Yeah. Um, I wonder. But, <laughs> um, but anyway, the LaLaurie Mansion in New Orleans. Um, this was a cool trip to New Orleans. It really, really <laughs> was. And you've been there before, obviously. I have, yeah. What, um, have you ever been there for ghosts before? I was there for Halloween a couple times. Does oh that my count? gosh, how was that? That was cool as shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was so much fun. I would say it, everyone always goes like, oh, Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Fuck that. Go there for Halloween. So much more fun. <laughs> I've never done Mardi Gras, but like Halloween just is way cooler. It's on my Excel spreadsheet of places to go <laughs> for <laughs> Halloween. You should. <laughs> like, you so should I definitely. Hey, it. maybe maybe 2023 is the year. Yeah. Um. It, but yeah, I'd never done ghost stuff there. Uh, actually, wait, I lie. I did. It wasn't. Yeah, I did. I did. When I was doing Haunted Highway, we did a ghost hunt out in this swamp where there was a community that got wiped out during some crazy hurricane. Wow. Yeah, like the early 1900s. So I did. It wasn't in New Orleans. It was just outside. Um, but I, I did. Was it Man Manchac? Man Manchac Bayou? I feel like. But yeah, it was. It was the scariest part about that investigation was it was at night in a yeah. swamp. And terrifying terrifying and we're like on this like weird little island out where there used to be all these where there used to be a community um and i shine a fl i like kind of walked over this like little hump in this island and i shine a flashlight and there was about 60 alligators no. just all laid up just on the on the bank just like but it was in the winter so they they like their bodies just shut down in the cold and they were just like frozen. Oh my God, that's terrifying. Yeah, and I went to the producer. I was like, we're fucking done here. And they're like, oh, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> and I'm like, you, you f what? <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> yeah. How many times has that said? Has yeah, have... So many times. No, it's fine. It's just, just let's just get the shot and get it done. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, been getting fucking alligator rolled. How was Haunted Highway? Haunted Highway was um, incredibly tough to make. How come? I think you'll kind of relate to this because of lockdown, of, of having to shoot it all yourself. Oh, yeah. And try and kind of track the story. We Because it was really bare bones. You know, we we did have a kind of show. We had a showrunner. Um, but, and we had, it, it was showrunners, a sound guy, and um, and camera assistants. That's it. Wow. Um, but yeah, it was, it was a tough show to make because of, well, for one, it was for sci-fi. Mm. And sci-fi is not necessarily the best network to work w with back in the day. Okay. They were really uh, sticklers and they were really... For like what, budget? Budget and they, they re like if you if we delivered something that wasn't in the treatment, like if, if we sent them the treatment for the, like the breakdown for, hey, we're going to go investigate, you know... Man, you know, Bayou Manchac in um, in New Orleans, and this is the story, and this is you know what we're hoping to find, and here's the, the here's the thread we're kind of following. If you delivered something that wasn't exactly what was written, they would they would shut the episode. They would be like, nope, that's not what that's not what we want. And they want to air the episode. They, they would. It never happened, but the 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 tone was. If you submit a creative, that better be what we see. Oh my gosh! So, th so there was no room there for was no spontaneity. Room. There was nothing to the point where, like, you know, we joke, we laugh, we like, you know, I'm I'm a kind of jovial guy, and like, I had this like running joke where like every episode I would like just stop what I was doing and just take a piss. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like always peeing. <laughs> and they like, it, it was in a cut and they got like super pissed. See, but that's funny. And like Haunted Highway, from what I remember, it was supposed to very much hit that age group yeah. where Jack Osborne peeing during the middle of a ghost investigation would be cool. Yeah. It would be funny. Totally. Yeah, they they, they wanted no humor. Um 
but it was it was fun you know we we went to some pretty it it wasn't so ghost it was there was a lot of cryptid as well there was a okay. lot of you know we we went to some places that were a little uh a lot of outdoor locations okay. which i fucking hate why is that i hate ghost hunting outdoors well oh yeah well that, it's yeah. like <laughs> what am i like is that a ghost or is that an owl? <laughs> is that a fox doing a mating call I hear or is that Beelzebub? When did it come out? 2011? 2011, yeah. Okay, so Paranormal State was just wrapping up. And I remember when the news hit and everyone was like, Jack Osborne is <laughs> ghost hunting. <laughs> like, yeah. So. It, it was funny because I was like, oh, uh, because that's when I learned how like the ghost hunting world is really like, you know, hmm, you know, oh, like you got to earn, you got to yeah. earn your stripes. Yeah. Um, but people really responded really positively to it. And I think it was just because of how bare bones it was. Mm. Um, and, you know, we went to some cool places, but I, you know, I didn't, because I think a lot of the locations we filmed at were outdoors, I didn't really have any like, holy shit. Like, yeah. was that a fucking, you know, it, it, it was a bit more, um, nebulous with this the evidence that we got like i don't know was that something shit i can't tell yeah so it's more, then it becomes more about that friend vibe the scooby-doo vibe it of was, like let's just go out and see what happens it and was get scared with your buddy exactly it was more yeah. about the adventure and like they had they would always have us do an adventure beat so it'd be mm. like riding snowmobiles or dirt bikes or That's cool. yeah it was fun um but the, the shitty thing was i got diagnosed with ms while we were midway through season two, but we had to shut down production and like we had to change things up because I got sick. And then when, you know, there, there were certain restrictions when I, cause I was still trying to figure out like, what are my limitations with MS? And a lot of people complain about being in extreme heat or extreme cold is terrible for MS mm. for some people. I, I, I've learned that it's not a problem, but they, they sent me, to a Tonopah, Nevada to go investigate an old mine and they sent me in January. Well, Tonopah, Nevada in January um, gets very cold. Uh, and in a mine? In a mine. Yeah, pretty cold on a mine. Yeah. And um, it got to like minus 30. Holy shit. It was so fucking cold like crew members were like like losing digits kind of thing. Like it was bad. <laughs> like got the shot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is a great shot. It's great. Like, um, and yeah, so that that was, uh, and it was very much like you just got to. So I guess where I'm going with this long ass story is like they were adamant, like get you have to get what we wrote down. If you don't, we're all fucked. Wow. Yeah. So then what, how many seasons did you guys we have? We did two and they wanted a third and I said no because I was kind of, I didn't like the way that um, I, I was being, I didn't, I didn't like the relationship with the network. Well, good for you though, because I think that's hard to, yeah. for people to stand up for themselves in this business sometimes. Yeah. Um, but uh, here we are at the LaLaurie Mansion. Um, should we kind of dive into some of the lore of the LaLaurie Mansion? There's so much lore. Um, I, I think the biggest challenge with a place like LaLaurie Mansion is because of the origin story and because of where it is and the, you know, all of the, the kind of magic that exists in New Orleans and how much they embrace um, kind of the macabre mm -hmm. is that you inevitably have so much whisper down the lane, so many exaggerations, so many uh, tourists coming through thinking they saw something or experiencing yeah. something and you know, it's probably explainable. But um, you have a lot of that and I think sometimes it makes it into books or it makes it into uh, you know, the tours they do and then, so it makes, and all of it's fine, you know, but it just, when you're a ghost hunter and you're trying to kind of marry, is there any, any kind of historical uh, evidence that can support a paranormal experience, or is there anybody prior to us being here that have, has had an experience similar to what we're having? It becomes really hard to sift through all that. And I think that was, that's like my biggest headache with this place. There, yeah, I mean, there, it's so much, it's almost spaghetti on the wall. Yeah. You know, cause I, I can remember being a, so it's actually, whoa, this is actually kind of funny. 
Okay, did you ever see this movie? And this, I was looking at this last night, the St. Francisville Experiment? No, wait. This okay. Is, no. Okay, so the St. Francisville Experiment uh, came out in the 2000s, and it was right on the heels of um, uh, Blair Witch. And I brought up the St. Francisville Experiment because my friend's dad had made the made this film and it was meant to be like a these college students are tracing the um the steps of madame lalori after she hightailed it out of new oh, orleans interesting. and apparently they had some kind of plantation out in um saint francisville um and she held up there and she continued doing her like dastardly deeds before she went back to france um, that's the kind of the backstory of this. It's scripted. It's scripted, yeah. but it was shot like it was a documentary. Okay. But yes, so the the lure of um, Madame Lalaurie kind of extends out so far and wide because uh, I mean, some people think that when she got busted with you know the fire in the house and they found all the bodies and this, that, and the other, um, they you know they she did leave, she did run away, she went to this you know another home yeah. and then eventually went back to Paris where she allegedly continued her docilely deeds. Yeah, it's it's hard and it's also I think what what's challenging about doing the shows is we're only there for so long and even doing pre investigation work yep. or post investigation work. It's still to research the places that we are going to you need to commit years, mm -hmm. <laughs> years and years and years to getting everything. So we heavily rely on actual historians and people who research this stuff. And even then, it's like not everybody is on the same level. Not everybody is looking at the same stuff. Not everybody's looking at it the same way. So it's we're uh, it's one of those things, again, where we're kind of at the mercy of what we're being told. Yeah. And um, so I know one of the things and I'm not sure if this was said in the episode to, um, well, okay, so the the caretaker's area is the most haunted. Yeah. And we weren't allowed to film in there. And so I'm not sure if they said this on camera because we weren't allowed to film in their apartment. And I totally get it. They don't want people in there. Makes sense. Um, but there's a part in the episode where they're like, well, we're on the third floor of the house and um, they were like, this is where the torture happened. But the thing is, the original house burnt down. Mm -hmm. So that burnt down in 34 and then was rebuilt in like 38. So the house that's there today is not the house that Madame LaLaurie lived in. Um, and it never had a third floor. But it's, it's still it doesn't matter because these things still happened on this property. Yeah. This property is still connected to it. People are experiencing things there today. Um, but I did find that really interesting that the caretakers area is the most haunted. And mm -hmm. I remember them telling us shit like goes flying in their apartment, like bakeware, pant pots and pans. Yep. And Furniture gets moved <laughs> yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, but it ultimately it comes down with like the restriction of like, hey, you can film here, but and so you kind of sometimes get backed into a place where you're like. All right, we have to tell a version of the story. We yeah. don't have the ability to tell the whole story. We can tell a version of the story. It's, again, the glimmer. Yeah. Like, you get a glimmer of what we do. Um, was was the owner more hesitant about the ghost stuff or just the filming stuff? It was more about the filming stuff. Um, and it was, and yeah, it was the filming stuff and because we had, we had kind of restrictions on when we could be there, when we couldn't, I remember. Um, and we had to, you know, keep the place in a really neat and tidy you know orderly fashion and you know he just didn't want any damage oh yeah i mean the the place is gorgeous i was yeah. so blown away by totally right oh my gosh it's breathtaking yeah it's not my style but it's cool yeah um the you know the the frustrating thing too is you know when, when as you're saying you know when we reach out to these historians you you're trusting that, you know, oh, this is a historian, so I'm going to trust what they're saying. And, you know, I know that there were some inconsistencies with the the historian that we spoke with. Yeah. Um, and that kind of led to some some kind of behind the scenes drama. It did. We um, so he's he's awesome and he's a he's a tour guide. And I think, again, like nothing nefarious, but I just think there were some holes in history that we were getting. And 
Um, what I wish we had done, because we say it in the episode a lot where we're like, let's separate myth from fact. Mm-hmm. And I wish we hadn't had done that because yeah. it's like we're shooting ourselves in the foot because we like this like this place has so much history tied to it, so much lore. How do you do that in three days? You can't. Yeah. You know, so um, I wish we had taken a different approach. Like, or I guess I wish we didn't even have that in our heads of like, let's see if we can do it. it because I just don't know how you do. I think even people that have been studying this for years still don't have the full story. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, so I was concerned about that. And I um, tracked down a researcher who had spent a lot of time researching the house. And I talked to them very kind I told them what we were working on I'm like we're I know it's a TV show I don't know if like you would be willing to talk to me I don't know that we can do an interview with you I asked if we could we didn't have the time um but I'm like look I can relay your your information as best as I can and I know you and I had talked about it Mm -hmm. and there were some interesting things that they had to say um uh but you know at the end of the day we couldn't use our their well we couldn't do an interview with them and I think they ended up at the at the end when the show came out they were upset mm. with and everything that, and that kind of happens yeah. you know it it like it happens more often than i would like yeah people do get kind of you know you're always going to tick someone off it listen it's fucked up what happened at that house yeah but it's not as bad as i think we've all been led to believe oh gosh no the the lore you hear going into new orleans about uh, the Lolori house. I think everybody's heard the thing where somebody was put back together as a crab. Yeah. And like, you know, you hear all this like wild shit and it's, it comes from somewhere, you know, but it's not this um, almost characterish view of like people. It's people had broken bones. People ha- were hurt. People were injured. People were tortured. People were malnourished. Um, but, it, you know, I think some of the stories you hear are just, they've and, grown a lot. And the and the kind of, you know, the slaves that were killed, it was more like, from I remember, it, it was kind of more like weird accidents, right? It wasn't like, there may have been some murders, but like, didn't the young girl, she slipped and fell from the third floor? Yeah, and I even think there's speculation about whether she was real. Yeah. Like, there's so much um... There's so many stories about this place that it's hard to know what was real. And then, and also, you know, historians, they'll always say, well, we don't have documentation of something, which is true, you know, but then you also have to think, well, what would have been documented? Like how much would have been covered up? Yeah. And I think another part of the episode that got cut out, um, you and I visited uh, um, some voodoo priestess. Yeah. And we visited Voodoo Authentica, which if you guys are ever in New Orleans, that is the number one place I go if you want to talk to people who um, know everything there is to know about Voodoo. And they are so happy to educate people on the religion and the magical practices that they do. Um, or I guess I shouldn't say magical practices, but the um, the rituals they do. That's part of their, their religion. Um, and we spoke with Brandy and her staff mm-hmm. and... Uh, they were so kind and you know something that I, I think that you hear a lot and I remember another place I investigated in New Orleans um, the it was a murder suicide horrible it is still the case to this day that I don't like to talk about or think about um, oh was that the, the I listened to a podcast about this the guy you? who worked at the bar yes and he like chopped up his girlfriend it is the most fucked up place I've ever been in my oh, life oh it's that that story's insane. You investigated that? I slept there. <gasps> I slept in that. And that apartment. was recent. That was he was like an Iraq war veteran, wasn't he? Yep. I, yeah. It was like the ten year anniversary that we were there, and I, it, it's still the original bathtub where he dismembered her. It's still the original stove where he put her body parts and cooked her. It is still the original. Well, there's speculation if it's the original fridge. Some people say no. A lot of people say yes. Because they killed someone else. They, they killed a young girl, and then he killed the girlfriend, right? Uh, was it there? So there's – all his friends say when he came back from the war, something was really wrong. Yeah. And there were some people, I think, that said something might have happened with a child when he was in war. And I don't know for sure. Um, but that was what was being told to us. Um, regardless, he was not okay when he came home. Mm-hmm. And he was in a relationship with this woman. 
It was a very toxic relationship. They were both bartenders, um, very well liked by everybody. Everybody knew them. When Hurricane Katrina came in, they were in all these magazines because they didn't stop bartending. Mm -hmm. They were giving drinks to anybody who was still there. And um, it was, they were very much in love at that point. And I think the article that came out about them, I think was called Love Among the Ruins, I think. Um, But it ended very, very poorly. They lived in this apartment. He killed her, slept with her body. I, and I don't mean sexually, but he's cuddled. Like, yeah, yeah, they were. He kept her in there um, in the bed and then he put her in the bathtub, dismembered her, put parts of her body in the fridge and the rest he started to cook. And then he had, I guess, an awakening of what was happening, spent all of his money, wrote like an eight page confession. Mm hmm. And died by suicide um, by jumping off of a, I think it was a hotel or a, a garage. Part. It was like, yeah, it was yeah. like a, yeah, like a, a high, multi-story garage. Yeah. yeah. And he had a note on him that told the police where to go and mm-hmm. what to look for. And when you, I've seen the this photos um, from the scene. And when you walked in, it was like spray painted everywhere. Like, I, I am a failure like big letters all over the walls, like don't look in the oven. And it it was so fucked up. So I had this moment, I slept next, I slept between the oven and the fridge. And I woke up, I will never forget this. The first thing I saw was that stove. And I, like, you know how sometimes you're when you're asleep in a different place, you're like, where am I? Mm-hmm. I had kind of a slight moment of that. I'm like, where am I? I'm like, oh, and I saw that stove. And it was like this immediate thing of what the fuck am I doing in my life? <laughs> Where this, <laughs> this is what I'm waking up to. This is horrible. Um, and I had somebody at a convention years ago and they were like, what's the worst place you've ever investigated? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. There's some scary places out there and blah, 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 blah. And they're like, well, what about that place in New Orleans? And I had completely blocked it out. Yeah. Completely. That one, that one really, really kind of messed me up emotionally. What, what was so difficult about it? Because it was so recent and there was... It was recent. Um, so when you see pictures of them, they look like people I would hang out with. Yeah. They look like friends I would know. Um, it's hard because I, uh, you know, I do the volunteer counseling and I work a lot with um, uh, women and women who are in bad situations and so just knowing what type of relationship she was in. It's just a hard, sad, terrible, terrible thing. And I don't like investigating things that recent. It's, I yeah, don't like it, it. It feels, you know, it's funny. I share the same vibe. It feels dirty. Yeah. And like the only way I do it is if somebody is like, I need help. Like a living person mm-hmm. is like, hey, this stuff is going on. And that's kind of how that came about as the person who leases the place um, they, they are a voodoo priestess, but they were like, look, I don't have the equipment you guys have. If you guys can get something for me, like objectively, you know, that would be great. Was, did, was there paranormal activity going on? In yeah. There? Yeah. But I don't necessarily know it's from the murder suicide. What's interesting about that case, um, it goes back further. So mm. we were able to document the haunting historically, at least into the early nineties, because we found a musician who lived there. He did not want to be on camera. He's pretty well known. And um, when he told his family he was going to move into that apartment, they were like, you can't. You can't live there. He was like, well, why? They're like, you know what they used to do there. I don't. And then his family told him. And it was part of a, I I guess maybe a plantation. I don't know if it was a proper plantation. But they had slaves there. Um, They kept them in that building in that apartment and like tortured them and his experiences were of a little ghost boy Mm. that i think he would see but definitely experience and it's interesting because the current or at least the person that was leasing when we were there that was her experiences too that there was a little boy and we had little pebbles thrown at us when we were there from the attic wow they would like come out and um, I actually had this like really crazy vision when I was there where I was awake. I was talking to everybody. We were in the middle of interviews. Everything blurred out. And it was like I was watching a movie. Oh, shit. And I thought it was real. And the door 
like flung open like somebody was on the rampage to the point where I was like, <gasps> and everyone stopped and looked at me. They're like, are you, what's wrong with you? And then I came to, and it wasn't the scene that I had saw in my, like in front of me. It was wow. different. Um, That's so, crazy. Yeah. It was, it's a very bizarre place. Yeah. But like to that, to that point, you know, the, what you're talking about, how that building was used and they, you know, mistreated slaves that probably was common occurrence yeah. in New Orleans pre-Civil War. You know, they just treated everyone like shit. If you were for someone's property, it's like you're getting treated like property. Well, and that's what's so fascinating about Madame LaLaurie is because, I mean, it was accepted practice at that yeah. time. But people were so pissed at yeah. her. Or there was like a mob of thousands of people that ran her out of town, mm -hmm. like tore down her house and <laughs> took everything they could from it, ransacked it, and were like, if you ever come back here, we will. Yeah, you're going to get killed. Yeah, like so how bad, like just to paint a picture of how bad it was yeah. that she, what well, she was doing. Uh, the, an interesting fact that came out was that she got investigated by the police because they started noticing that she was going to the uh, slave market mm. a lot. And then they were like, what the fuck's this woman doing? Like, it's not like she had a plantation in the city. She right. had a house. And she kept going and, and buying more slaves. Um, and I guess the police did investigate her and they found like, I guess she said, oh, you know, she was saying that, they were, uh, that her slaves were running away. Oh, um, interesting. But then, but then they were like, "Why aren't you reporting that?" Because that that you know that was that's when they would go after people. Yeah. Um, and she and they in and she got fined. There was like a weird. She did get some kind of, you know, fine or some action was kind of put forth, but that kind of gets left out. You know, I think that's mm. a kind of a more of an interesting story because it was like, yeah, she was she was like she was buying people and they were they were dying whether she was you know they were accidentally getting killed or she was killing regardless there was a there were people dying in that building and it seemed like people then were kind of like something strange going on there yeah. you know yeah. to and but you i mean it must have whatever the scene truthfully was when that fire started um it must have been bad enough for you know uh, a kind of a mob of people to come and try and you know they wanted justice. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. Um, the haunting too. I feel like we had some pretty like very weird experiences. I don't very. know that they were super intense. No. But like the the candle blowing out, which mm -hmm. I know you and I talked about a lot. We're like, did somebody accidentally blow that out? Did somebody do it on purpose? But when you watch the footage, if somebody blew that out, that smoke would have gone like a ninety degree angle. Yep. Instead, it kind of goes like, like to the and, right and, and up. The flame just shrinks. Mm -hmm. It doesn't go like poof out. It just yeah. goes. Shoop. Yeah. And we were very much asking for that to happen at that time. Like yeah. do something and blow out the candle. And actually, there's a funny story. And only in New Orleans, um, the Ouija board that we're using. Um, <laughs> do you remember this? We didn't have a Ouija board no. in our kit. Yeah, we had to find someone. <laughs> so <laughs> apparently in New Orleans, you can get Ouija boards delivered. Yeah. Like pizza. Mm hmm. And so our producers were like, shoot, we got to find a Ouija board. Is there like a Walmart somewhere where we can go and get one? And someone was like, wait, there's like a guy that delivers them. <laughs> <So> <laughs> it was like Uber Eats for Ouija boards. Yeah. So we find this guy and he comes. I go outside because I'm like, I got to meet this guy. And they're really pretty Ouija boards. Yeah. He designs all of them, does all the artwork on them. He had a whole trunk full. Uh-huh. Did you, you, did you bought one for yourself I as well? I bought two for myself. Yeah, I was like, I'll take two. <laughs> and oh, I have, so, I have yeah. something for you before you go. Oh, do you? I do. Did I have a, um, we made these Aussie Ouija boards. <gasps> what? Yeah, I have one for you. And I I kept forgetting to bring it when we were doing portals. But oh I, my I have gosh. It. Yeah, I have it in my office. My I'll bring little it heart is singing. Yeah. <laughs> it was like this limited edition thing we did. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. Have you used one yet? Uh, I haven't used one yet. No, I probably should add it to the kit though. 
just that would be really you know, funny just some good branding conjure your dad yeah like, <laughs> he's like what yeah. <laughs> what do you want <laughs> why am i here <laughs> sharon <laughs> um yeah so we buy these ouija boards off this guy and what's interesting too is he infuses them with energy mm. I don't know what kind of energy. I think yeah. I asked, but also I don't know him and I'm buying Ouija boards out of his trunk. So <laughs> like, he just like smears his dick on it. He's yeah. like, here's my energy. <laughs> <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. If it's New Orleans, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, let's talk through some of the evidence that we did get. Yeah. I mean, we had that candle going out. We had that, I mean, clear as day, I heard a growl in that little attic space. Yeah, that's wild. And then that that to me was the hot spot, that secret little room. Yeah, I don't know the the vibe in there was was not fun. Where was that room off of a bathroom? Yeah, it was a secret. There's like a secret door you open in the bathroom yeah. and you go through, and it's like this little man cave. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It was like, wasn't there a bar in there? There too? was a bar. There's a bed. I mean, you know, I think things <laughs> things have happened in that room, um, which you know, it's New Orleans. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know? um, but yeah, it was. There was a. I would. If someone said to me, "Hey, come sleep at my house, and we're gonna put you in that room," I'd be like, "Nope." Yeah, not with the lights off. No. Not alone. No, that room was freaky, and and that footage we got where um, uh, our producer was filming, and you see something covering the light. Yeah. And I, I could, to this day, I still can't figure out what that was. And you saw that with the naked eye. I did. I saw it looked like someone was stood by that bed. And how many how many times did it block out the light? Do you remember? I think because it caught my attention at first. And that's when I was like, oh, what, what is? So I definitely saw it twice. Yeah. Um, and then uh, our producer saw it as well. And she was freaking out. Yeah. She was getting really. And it was only four of us. That's the thing, too. I don't think that's shown in the episode. It was me, you, Scott, who was our director of photography, and Elaine, who was our showrunner. Mm -hmm. And that was it. Because we yeah. had streamlined it down. We're like, we need less people. Yeah. Because there was a lot of people in the house mm -hmm. when we first. Because, you know, we had some producers coming out from L.A. for it yeah. and stuff. And um, that was where we had... Um, when the the uh, the geoport, when we asked how many people are in the room, oh yeah, said nine. Nine. And that was nine <laughs> people in the room. Oh, geoport. <laughs> never fails. Never <laughs> fails. But yeah, it it. I think if that place, if it didn't look so great, yeah, like if it, like that place is immaculate. It's yeah, clean. So it's. I mean, they've put so much money into that. You know, modernizing it, and it's it's beautiful. If that place wasn't um you know as pristine it would be i think way way more scary yeah I, especially i think back to like when that woman annie lived there as an as apartments in like yeah. the 60s it must have been a little scary and she also told us things off camera like something with her dad he had way more experiences when he was there alone yeah. i think when the kids weren't there and he would see a figure of a man mm -hmm. i remember her telling us yeah, that Yeah, i remember that yeah because he because I was right because he he raised the kids. She, was she? He was like a single father, and yeah. he had the kids, and um, that's why she was there alone a lot. I think is what she said. Yeah. Um, and but, then you and I heard that breath. Yep. Which this is really strange to me. I don't know why this happens, and it has only really happened with you. You and I have had this happen multiple times on different cases where we will hear a breath in between us. Mm -hmm. Like there's a third little ghost hunter friend we yeah. can't see, and they're just like, guys. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. When are they gonna recognize me? <sighs> it's so strange, but that was the first time that happened yeah. with us. I can still remember that moment. The tension in the room was growing, and it's it's for people at home who haven't experienced that. The best way I can describe it is. Um, <sighs> yeah <sighs> a little ghost friend it's like uh if you ever walk into a room where people have been fighting but they're not fighting when yeah. you walk in <laughs> yeah. and like everything seems normal but you can feel it in mm -hmm. your body you're like something's off here um or we're everybody just talking about me what is going on uh it's kind of that feeling that tension yeah. and that was growing in the room at the time and then that breath came through we both heard it with our naked ear it was so loud so clear yeah, and I don't know that it comes off that clear on television. No. It's much louder to us. Yeah, that happened to us again at uh, at Fort Mifflin. Remember that? And we actually got yeah. it on 
We got it on your recorder, your Zoom oh, recorder, um, and our mics picked it up. A Fort Henry... D uh, Mifflin. Uh, no, it was the one William, in New York. William Henry. Yes, William. yes, that one. Yeah, William yeah. Henry. That one was really strange. And again, that was me, you, and Scott. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, but we had three three microphones pick that up. Yep. Yeah, that was crazy. So weird. Um, what do you think of the SLS now that we've had some time away from SLS? I fucking hate the SLS. Me too. Yay. And, and his is the bane of my existence. <laughs> um, in theory, the SLS is great. In theory. For one, it never fucking works. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of times that we've had to send that thing back. And the guy's like, oh, no, we got it. We got it this time. It's good. It's good. And like. You literally like blink at it wrong, and it and it stops working. Um, the I am I am on the fence because sometimes there are sometimes I've used it where I've been like, that's not that's not pick that's not picking up a chair that's not picking up a something that could somehow it tries to like it almost matrixes it it does yeah. its own matrixing if you will yeah um, there are some times where I've been like hmm weird. Um, when we were using it at the LaLaurie, it was one of those times. Because didn't you say like you felt like cold when it when I was like it's touching you and yeah. you're like I feel my wrist cold. Yeah, I go back and forth with the SLS because I'm like you, where there's been times where I there's nothing there to map out, and it seems like it's matching something that we know or a part of history or other people's experiences with location or size or whatever. Um, so I've had interesting things. I don't know that I would ever put a stamp on an SLS being like, this is concrete proof, Yeah, you know, but Lolari, I go back now. I think it's explainable. Yeah. You think it was I the think, chair? I think so. Yeah. But you think differently. I don't. So my only reason why I don't think it's the chair, because it's, it's Xbox. They, that, the technology for an SLS is the, um, is the controllerless, you know, I don't even know what you, it's the Connect. Yeah, that's it. It was the Xbox Connect. And mm. that whole thing was designed to put in your living room yeah. and map out, I can tell if there's a human and then you would move around and the computer would move, the video game would move. Yeah. So my question is, why would they design it to map a sofa when they know, or a right. chair, when they know there's going to be a fucking chair in your room yeah. where your Xbox is going to be? Right. So I, and it would read that and so it would theoretically screw up whatever game you're playing because it's going to see you and a chair and it's going to think there's two people yeah um so that's the only thing that i lean on to go no it's mapping a chair mm. versus it's not yeah um and everybody else too i will say when we were doing that experiment in the kitchen everyone from our crew was behind the counter mm -hmm. so the only people that were in front was whoever you saw on on camera yeah I, I used it recently on uh, an investigation and it was it was on a wall mm. and that was pretty interesting because there was nothing it could have mapped on yeah and I was like oh is it maybe a shadow can it can it pick up a shadow and I don't know I'm I, I'm always I'm I'm 70 30 70 percent mm. I think that thing sucks 30 percent <laughs> of the time I'm like okay there's something here <laughs> I wonder if you'll get sponsorship for them now. I know right the guy whatever his name is whoever we keep sending it back to oh, those fucking assholes um <laughs> but yeah so I I'm on the fence with the the SLS overall um do you remember the vampire guy from the voodoo crew? I feel, oh, oh, I loved him. What was his name? What was his name? Because he came and like purified us yes. afterwards. He came over. Oh, that's that's where we were going before I got into the, uh, the other place I investigated. Yeah. So we go to Voodoo Authentica. We meet with Brandy and her team and they do this, um, this ritual to open us up. Mm -hmm. And I can't remember what it's called, but we had to like dance and mm -hmm. kind of sing and they like blessed our feet. And I know why, why, why that clip didn't make the fucking episode kills me. We were having like a full on voodoo ritual <laughs> and it didn't make the episode. And we're like banging a drum and like, I think they like, you know, cut a chicken's throat. <laughs> it was really cool. Yeah. And they also, what I appreciate about them so much is that they, they really break down the stereotypes of voodoo yeah. and just like tell you what it's really about. And um, 
you know, and, you know, Brandy was even like, I wouldn't be surprised if Madame LaLaurie's slaves were practicing voodoo. Mm -hmm. She's like, because that would have been their religion. So, of course, like you call on your religion when you're in times of trouble. Um, So it was a really good clip with a lot of information and things that we did. And then I I, ah, that's going to kill me. That guy's name. He was so sweet. Yeah. Um, He's friends with Michelle. He is. Yeah. Because he's a vampire, he's a vampire like a yeah. legit vampire. Yeah. Um, And he came at the end of the episode. He came and like closed us off mm-hmm. and then gave us like Floridian water. Yeah. And I think some beads for protection. Yep. I still have those. Do you? Yeah. Do you wear have, them? Yeah. Uh, I don't wear them, but I still I have them. I have like a little an area where all the all the things I get given on ghost hunts and oh, whatever yeah? I put in. Although I did that ghost hunt I went on with my mom and weird shit happened. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I forgot to, when I came home from that, st- weird shit started happening. And I remembered someone gave me a key from that the hotel that we were investigating. And I, and I ended up burying the key in my backyard. Oh, you think the key had an attachment? I think it did. Why did they give you a key? I don't know. They just said, oh, it's a souvenir from the hotel from back in the day when it was, you know, yeah, and I like I went and dug a hole and buried it in the backyard. Did the activity stop? Yep. Do you think they were doing it to you on purpose? I don't think so. Right. Well, I don't know. I the, mean, the the person that gave me the key is a is like a a very committed ghost hunter. Very, you know, yeah, like had actually some really great um, evidence. Um, I don't know if if um, I, I don't think I don't think it was an intentional thing. But what, where I knew something was up was I was laying on my couch and I woke up and this was a couple weeks later. It was right before Christmas. Um, I, I woke up and I usually will like lay down on the couch if I'm going to fall asleep, but I fell asleep, like sat upright and I, I just opened my eyes. And as I did, I saw my, the house that I was living in at the time, I'd, I've moved since, um, the door to my kid's room, I could see, like if I'm looking at the TV straight on, I could see the door just kind of to the right. And I just see the door slowly open. Well, you're awake at this point? I'm awake. I woke up and then the door just slowly opens to to my kid's bedroom. And I was like, and I thought it was one of my kids waking up being like, hey, like I'm, I woke up, I had a nightmare, whatever. Yeah. And I said, and I called out, I was like, you know, Andy, Minnie, like, it's, it, go back to bed. It's okay. Like, whatever. I'll come. I'll come lay with you. And nothing was there. And no one was there. And I was like, huh. And I go into the room, and it just feels super weird. And I was like, uh, uh-uh. I was like, get the fuck out of here. I was like, you are not welcome in my house. Wow. Get the fuck out now. I just was like pissed off. So how long after that did you realize it was the key? Probably another month. Wow. Yeah. And then it just hit you, like, what did I, were you thinking, like, yeah. what would have opened this? What yes. did I do? Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, but I'm off the, I, I don't, I don't do the whole, like, mm, you know what, you're not welcome here, please leave. I get angry. <laughs> I'm like, now I'm like, get out. Like, this is my space, not yours. Fuck off. Because I figure, like, you know, if you were telling someone to get out of your house, you wouldn't yeah. be like, excuse me, can you, <laughs> would, you mind, would you mind leaving my house? <laughs> you know what's do you still live there no i moved you, okay i just moved a couple a couple weeks well a month a little over a month and a half but you left the key in that hole oh yeah so what's funny is like a hundred years from now somebody's gonna dig up that key yeah and they're gonna be cursed to <laughs> <the> kingdom come. <laughs> it's gonna be nick cages yeah great great watch great. i'll be watch what what if my soul gets attached to that key and i'm living it up in heaven and all of a sudden i just get sucked down attached to the key and i'm like in the living room like <laughs> anyway ghost ghost stuff um so what is your overall feeling of the investigation of the lalori Lil- 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 mansion um definitely there's something going on in the supernatural uh there what it is i am not sure mm-hmm. i would love to go back um and investigate some more space i like i don't even care like not on tv i'd love to just go back and yeah. check it out and stay there a couple of days um <clears throat> i'd love to know more of the history i would really you know that that whole thing with the uh researcher we talked to that upsets me so much because i have such a respect mm-hmm. for researchers and his historians and all that stuff so um you know and the tour guide like i just love new orleans yeah so it upsets me that somebody got upset about it um such a great city um but i would love to go back and just 
be there and like party actually yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go to <for> halloween <laughs> it's it's yeah it's a great city love it um but definitely haunted beautiful place uh with a tragic terrible history yeah what about you um you know i it wasn't as scary as i thought it was still mm. there was still some we got some awesome evidence though um but i i don't think from my experience i i i wasn't as um it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I thought it, once again it was going to be like shit flying off the walls, yeah. and, you know, and people puking, you know, pea soup, and <laughs> you know the whole get me an old priest and a young priest. Um, no, but it was it was still ultimately completely, you know, blown away that we even got to do that, and like that, you know, the the guy I know was cool enough to let us into his house, and you know it was it was great. Uh, but I do know though that after we left, it, that he did say it activity ramped up and really? that's why he didn't want any other any other more ghost shows to ever come to his property really yeah oh, yeah there shit. was a, yeah I, I remember like him emailing me there he's like yeah shit got crazy after you guys left because um i thought we'd i thought we'd fucked up the house because oh. he sent me an email and i'm like oh no and it was like you know oh, when God. you guys left it was like in the um, in the subject and I was like oh man did we oh. uh, and he's like a gazillionaire yeah. so it's like oh god right um, but no he was he was he was just like you know it was a lot of stress on on the caretakers and things Aww. got intense Aww. Yeah. Wait, oh wait the haunting for them the no stuff. I think it was intense when we were filming and then it got intense after we left but the supernatural act not like the filming not being there as a crew was yeah. intense for them no that was like having the crew and managing the crew and doing all that was that I think, was hard, kind of on, hard them. on them Aww. and then it was um I think pretty, I think the activity kind of ramped oh, up. Oh, no. Yeah. I feel so bad. I never <laughs> knew that because they were the sweetest ladies. They were. They were awesome. Yeah. Oh, gosh. We're assholes. I know. Womp, womp. Mm. Well, on that note, <laughs> should we uh, <laughs> these two assholes before I get out of here? Probably. It's that time. All right. Well, um, Katrina, where can they find episodes of Portals to Hell? Portals to Hell is streaming on Discovery Plus, and you can find all three seasons for your viewing pleasure. Yep, yep. All right. Until next time, uh, have a good one and uh, stay creepy. <laughs> <laughs>